In this video I'm going to try to explain cross-correlation and I'm going to do it by way of a demonstration in which I cross-correlate these two signals here, A and B. Now I'm going to run this script in a second and you can go through the script yourself by downloading the code from my WordPress site and you can obtain the code by either um, following this link or searching for cross-correlation up at the WordPress site. So let me get started by just running the script. So here are my two signals A and B. This is A at the top and B at the bottom. Now I'm not showing the axes associated with both signals because that would make the demonstration a little bit messy. Um, but I've shown the numerical values associated with each sample just shown beside each of the red, red dots which represents each sample. And um, really what cross-correlation is about is it's a measure of similarity between two signals at different lag positions or time lag positions. And at the moment what I'm showing is um, the signals A and B uh, aligned vertically such that there is a zero lag uh, between the two signals. And by that I mean that sample number zero of signal B, this value here, is aligned vertically with sample number zero of signal A which is here. Similarly sample number one of signal A is aligned vertically with sample number one of signal B. So each of the samples is basically vertically aligned and this illustration here shows both signals uh, aligned with what is known as a zero time lag and in order to calculate the correlation at zero lag we basically follow the same process as we saw seen in earlier videos and we multiply the the vertically aligned samples and then sum the result of each of those multiplications so we have 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.1 added to 4 multiplied by 0 0.2 added to minus 2.2 multiplied by minus 0 0.1 and so on and all those calculations are showed down here with the numerical result of 7.52 shown. So at a zero lag position we have a value, uh, a correlation measure of 7.52. Now when I hit the space bar you're going to see this um, <coughs> waveform at the bottom shift to the right. Now what we see is um, that sample number zero is aligned vertically with sample number one of signal A and sample number one of signal B is aligned with sample number two of signal A. Um, and this is referred to as a, a lag of one. So there's a lag of one sample between both, um, both signals. And to calculate the uh, correlation at um, this lag position, you multiply the vertically aligned samples by each other and you sum the results. Uh, so we have 0 0.1 be multiplied by 0 0.2 and that'll be added to 4 multiplied by minus 0 0.1 um, which will be added to minus 2.2 multiplied by 4.1 and so on. So all those calculations are shown down there and we get a result of minus 12.46. So the measure of similarity at this overlap or lag position is minus 12.46 and really what you're doing when you uh, work out cross correlation is you're calculating what is known as a correlation sequence at different overlap or lag positions so at a, a lag of zero we had a correlation measure of 7.52 at a lag of one we have a correlation measure of minus 12.46 and with cross-correlation, this measure of similarity uh, continues for the various lag positions. So I hit the space bar there a second ago, and that shifted the bottom waveform to the right by uh, another sample. So that sample number zero, signal B, is now aligned with sample number um, two of signal A. And again, you go through the same process to work out the correlation measure. You um, you multiply the vertically aligned samples and then add the result of each multiplication to come up with this numerical value. And what we can see here is that we get a, a relatively large value of 23.18 and that large value uh, indicates that there is strong similarity between these two signals at that overlap position and we can see that visually as well that the signals are quite similar at that overlap position. Uh, and with cross correlation you just continue on for each a lag position building up 
what is known as a correlation sequence for each lag position and it continues on for each possible overlap or lag uh, position. So the last calculation that's going to be done is we we'll multiply 0 0.1 by minus 0 0.1 to give you a value of minus 0 0.01 and that's our correlation measure at a lag of 6. Uh, now with cross correlation um, as well as shifting to the right my waveform at the bottom can be shifted to the left and that's referred to as negative lag. So now the sample number 0 of signal A is aligned with sample number 1 of signal B. Uh, and the same process carries on. We multiply the vertically aligned samples and then sum the result of each uh, of those multiplications to come up with a correlation measure. And that continues on in the other direction as I'm showing there. And the real key thing is to appreciate um, what lag means and also um, that we build up a correlation sequence at each overlap or lag position. Now there is a, a function in MATLAB called XCOR which will determine the cor cross correlation between two signals. So let me just show you that in operation. Um, so I have my signals A and B and I would like to determine the cross correlation sequence between those two signals and what you can do is use a, a signal called uh, or a function called cross correlation x core uh, so I'll just create a variable called uh, core seek uh, which will be equal to x core uh, a comma b and that will determine the cross correlation values at each overlap or lag position. And now I should say that um, I use the term overlap, uh, it's not a very commonly used term, lag position is the more correct term to use and also I've been showing the cross correlation uh, result for uh, using a basic correlation measure but you can apply different correlation me measures. So you could use normalized correlation, for example. But we can see here that the values um, that, I'm, that I showed in the demonstration match up with these values here. Um, the other thing you should be aware of is that um, the cross correlation function will also return the lag values if you um, use the function in this way. Um, so if you use the function in this way, you're asking for x core to return two uh, variables and it'll return the lags as well as um, the cross correlation sequence. So in this case, these are my lag, lag positions as well as my correlation sequence being returned. And that's useful because oftentimes you would like to plot the uh, cross correlation values or the cross correlation sequence and you would like to plot the lags against the um, correlation sequence. Just let me close that last figure. Okay so there is my plot of the cross correlation uh, sequence and I'm showing the lag positions at the bottom. So maybe I'll just finish up by uh, labeling that correctly. Okay, so there you go. Um, that's a plot of the cross correlation sequence and from this plot you can easily see that the signals A and B were most similar when there was a lag of two samples between the two signals. Now, cross correlation is used quite a bit. It's used uh, in radar systems, it's used uh, when you're searching for uh, the presence of repeating sequences in signals. And what I'm going to do in my next video is just show you some practical applications of cross correlation. Okay, thanks for your attention.